Today's lesson is about uh, proportional relationships. This is a review for your quiz on Wednesday. Please have this paper out. You should have a copy of this notes. Um, this is for Wednesday's quiz on proportional relationships in tables and graphs and word problems. So, number one, tell whether each table or graph represents a direct proportion. Notice that it's a sable. I want a full sentence answer here. So number 1A, it's a table. I have two options with my table to answer this question. Is this showing a proportional relationship? Two ways I can do this. You can answer it one of the two ways. I'm going to show you both on A. So the first way you can answer this is, does y over x give me a constant ratio or rate? So y, be careful that you're doing y on the top, is 9 over 3. And if I divide both parts of that by 3, I get 3 to over 1. Okay. Is it the same ratio as 54y over x? 54, if I divide both parts of that by 18, I get a 3 to 1 relationship. This would reduce to 3 to 1. Um, 87 over 29. I have to check all three of them. If there were four things in this table, you would have to do all four. Five, you would have to do all five. Ten, all five. I, each y value related to its x value, is it the same ratio or rate? And if I take 87 over 29 and divide both parts by 29, I do get a 3 to 1 rate, actually, because the denominator is 1. So I have a constant rate in the relationship of y and x. These two variables do have a direct proportion relationship. So tell whether each table or graph represents a direct proportion. The table is a direct proportion. This is one way is a direct proportion because there is a constant rate between the variables. Constant rate. It's 3 to 1. There is a constant rate, 3 to 1. So there is a constant rate between these two variables in this table. The second way, so this is the first way you could answer a table relationship. The second way is to say, oh, is there some number that I can multiply x by every time? So I'm looking for that multiplicative relationship. So is there some number that I can multiply x by every time to get my y value? And the answer is yes. It happens to be that rate of 3 to 1. If I multiply my x by 3, 3 times 3 gives me 9, 18 times 3 gives me 54, and yes, 29 times 3 gives me 87. So there is a constant that I can multiply my x by to get my y. So the table is a direct proportion. It is a direct proportion. This is the second way. Whoop, direct, not direction. Direct proportion, putting those words together. Proportion. Because every or each time Multiplying x by 3, multiplying x times 3 gives you the value y. Gives you the value of y, the variable y. So every time multiplying your x by 3, you get the value of y. So it's like this equation, y equals 3 times x. y equals 3 times x. That 3 is the constant. It's the constant of proportionality. We're going to talk about that in future lessons, but I might as well um, talk about that a little bit here. So here's my second way in a table. 
You can do that multiplying, but you have to show each time, each time on the table, you have to show times three, times three. So each time you have to show it on the table, or each time you have to show the ratios come down to the same rate or ratio. Sometimes it's just a ratio, but this is a rate because of the denominator being to one, three to one. Um, you get the same rate, either through the constant ratio way or constantly multiplying by the same value, multiplying by that same constant, three. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video for a moment, and I'm going to ask you to answer B on your own. So answer B, is this table a direct proportion? You don't have to answer both ways. Pick the one that you understand best. Do you understand the constant ratio, or do you understand the multiplying way? And the multiplying way looks a little hard on this one. So um, answer B on your own. We'll go over it in class. Okay, now you've started the video again, so we're going to answer C and B are the graph for, uh, questions. And you're going to see this on the quiz. There's going to be two table questions and two graph questions, just like this. The quiz looks very much like this review. So how do I know or how do I see a direct proportion in a graph? How do I see it? Well, there are two things, just like in the table, two ways you can do it. There are two things that must be true in the graph. Always have to be there. Must, must, must be true. First thing is, is it a straight line? Well, in this graph C, it looks like a straight line to me. And does that start at the origin? Is one of the points of the straight line, is, are the points lining up and going through the origin? The answer is yes. So it's met two of the criterion, the two criterion. Does it, is it, do the points lie in a straight line? Yes. And do the points pass through the origin? Yes. So this graph, or the graph, is a direct proportion. It's showing a proportional relationship. That means the same thing. Direct proportion or a proportional relationship. The graph is a direct proportion because the points graph or line up in a straight line, graph in a straight line, and pass through the origin. Zero, zero. Pass through the origin, both things, you have to state both things, same thing on the quiz, pass through the origin, which is zero, zero. So two reasons how you see a direct proportion in a graph. They have to lie in a straight line and pass through the origin. Letter C does just that. Letter D, hmm. Well, it looks like the points lie in a straight line. However, mm, the points do not pass through the origin. They're not down here. It's up one. So it's y-intercept, it's called, is at 0, 1. That's not the point 0, 0. That's the point 0, 1. So this is not a direct proportion. Not a direct proportion because it doesn't pass those two tests. It passes the straight line test, but not going through the origin. Um, not a direct proportion. The line does not pass, does not pass through the origin. So it doesn't pass that test not a direct proportion, does not pass through the origin. So you're, that's the things that we look for with a graph. In a table, just to summarize that, in a table, two ways you can answer a table. It doesn't have to match both of these, but yes, it will match both of these. You only have to give me one of these answers. That it's a constant ratio in the table. The relationship between y and x is a constant 
ratio, or you can multiply by a constant, like 3, every time to get your y value. So you have that multiplicative relationship, or you have um, the constant ratio. And a graph has to be a straight line, the points have to lie in a straight line, and they have to pass through the origin. So, in a word problem, how do we see a proportional relationship? The Anderson family is preparing for a family reunion. They think they will need 14 juice boxes for every four children. They must be going to be out there on a hot day playing some games or something. If the number of juice boxes is directly proportional, so they're telling us this is a proportional relationship, if the number of juice boxes is directly proportional, so juice boxes in English is coming first, to the number of children, so juice boxes to children is the ratio. How many juice boxes will they need if they are expecting 12 children? Hmm. Juice boxes is directly proportional to children. Juice boxes came first. First top. So 14 juice boxes. I'm going to have to use this relationship that they gave me. They think they're going to need 14 juice boxes for every four children. Juice boxes to children. English counts. Got to follow that English. How many juice boxes will they need if they are expecting 12 children? Hmm, well, I could do this two ways. I could figure out what would it be for one child and then multiply by 12. I could find the rate. How many juice boxes do you need for one child and multiply by 12 through the unit rate? I could do that. So 14 divided by 4. If I want to know what is it for one, I would divide 14 by 4. And I get 3 and a half. So the rate, and I'm going to label it, 3 and a half juice boxes per, that's the rate, per child. So I would need three and a half juice boxes per child. Yes, you can drink half of a juice box, so that is reasonable. Now multiplying by 12 children will give me the answer of how many will they need. Because there's 12 children. So three and a half times 12 would give me 42. They would need 42 juice boxes. This is one way I could solve this question, by finding the unit rate and then multiplying by what I need. I need for 12. The other way I could do it is I could do it through equal ratios. Hmm. So 14 to 4, and I bet a lot of you thought of it this way. You thought of it proportional reasoning. Oh, well this is for 4 children. How much would it be for 12 children? Well, to get 4 to be 12, you multiply by 3. So you must have to, whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. 14 times 3 is 42. And you make an equal ratio. You could do it that way. Oh, I see that 4 does nicely go into 12. So make it 3 times larger, make 14 3 times larger. That's the second way you could answer this. You could find the unit rate and multiply by what you need. Or, so one way you could do it is find the unit rate. The other way you can do it is um, do a equal ratio way or an equivalent, find an equivalent ratio. Whichever way you understand this question best. We could also bar model this too. If you wanted to bar model, 14 juice boxes for every four children. Draw 14, box around four of them. How many would you need if you have 12 children? You could draw that in a bar model. Third way, I'm thinking. And I'm, you might even come up with another way. If you come up with another way, please show me in class. That would be cool. Um, the Andersons, I didn't answer the question. So yes, again, I'm still sabling this. How many juice boxes will they need if they are expecting 12 children? So I'm going to sable this over here and try not to run out of space. The Andersons will need 42 juice boxes. The 
Andersons will need 42 juice boxes. So I did it one of two ways. Oh, come on. There we go. Number three, Catherine plays basketball. The table shows the number of miles Y she runs in X weeks. Oh, this must be her conditioning. All in order to train. Yep. Yeah. So she's a running, she's running because you know when you play basketball, you gotta really run around the court. Catherine plays basketball. The table shows the number of miles Y that she runs in X weeks in order to train. Tell whether Y is directly proportional to X. Explain. Oh, this is a table. Well, we already answered this one in number uh, one, card A and B. So you can choose, do I see that this is a proportional relationship? Uh, I'm gonna try the multiply way. Because I see 1 times 15 would give me 15. 2 times 15, oh, we're looking good, equals 30. 3, oh no, 3 times 15 would be 42, would be 45, not 42. Mm, so not a direct proportion. Explain. I did it the multiply way. This is not, tell, tell whether y is directly proportional to x. So her miles, Catherine's miles, is not a direct proportion. Catherine's miles is not directly proportional. And I could have just said it's not a direct proportion. Oh, why do I keep doing that? It is not a direct proportion. Catherine's miles is not a direct proportion, proportion to weeks. And I could have just said y and x, or I could just say this is not a direct proportion because there is not a constant. There's not a constant here. There's not a constant rate or ratio that you're multiplying by. There is not a constant. The relationship is not constant. I'm not multiplying by 15 every time. The last one didn't work. So not a proportional relationship. Okay, remember on this one, you had to change this to a 5. We had to change that to 5. Oops. Um, that, and, and please do that. Make sure if you haven't done that, that you've done that now. Okay, so... Katie makes wooden boxes. The table shows the number of bookshelves Y she makes in X days. So I have to find a number that 2 multiplies by to give me 5, and 6 multiplies by to give me 15, and 8 multiplies by to give me 20. Well, I don't see one off the bat that's easy to figure out. So I'm not going to do it the multiplying way. My other option is to show that they're the same ratio. Is this relationship proportional? So 5 over 2, is it the same ratio as 15 to 6? Is it the same ratio as 20 to 8? Well, I could put them in lowest terms and see if it's a constant. 5 divided by 2 would give me 2 and a half to 1. 15 divided by 6 would give me 2 and a half to 1. And 20 to 8 would give me two and a half to one. Oh, these are a two and a half to one ratio. So this is a proportional relationship. And why I explained, I showed it in my work here. Yes, there is a constant. There is a constant rate, every constant rate. There is a constant unit rate. Two and a half to one. Or they are all the same ratio between the bookshelves and the number of days. Yes, there is a constant unit rate. It's two and a half to one. So that's my explanation. How many bookshelves will she make in 30 days? Well, if she can make two and a half in one day, how many can she make in 30 days? Just take your two and a half, because I want this to be 30 days, times 30, times 30. So take two and a half times 30, and you will get 75. So she can make 75 bookshelves 
in 30 days. So Katie makes 75 makes 75 bookshelves. in 30 days. And that's it for today.